Can you see the slide now? Yeah, we can see that. Hello? Yes, I can see the slides. Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, good afternoon. Everyone and it's easier day. Thank you, Ma. Good afternoon, Ma. Thank you. The same to you. Happy World um, and Caesar Day 2021. My thank you. Okay. Doctor, sorry, one minute. Can I make an observation that we have, only, is... we have only 30 participants? Can we uh can we encourage people to join for two minutes before she starts? Okay, Usually, ma. we get up to about 100 people. Can we just send quickly reminders? All right, ma'am. But I will just, uh, in 120 seconds, you start. Okay, I'm Hold waiting. On. Dr. Agu, invite your department people to join before you start. I know we should get at least 10 people from the beautiful Confluence state. Or you want to present to an empty house? Let's get more people in, please. Dear colleagues, please invite other members to join us. It's two minutes now. We may start. I think we have more people now.
All right, ma'am, Dr. Agu, um, I think the floor is open now. You can start now. Um, Dr. Agu, Edit, are you there? <laughs> Hello, Dr. Agu, are you there? We have uh, about twice the number of participants we had earlier. Can you start now? Uh, please, can the host check the waiting room? Because she, it seems she has zoomed up. Perhaps she's in the waiting room. OK, I'm the host, so uh, I don't yeah. know how to check the waiting room. Yes, she, she's no longer you know, on board. Maybe she went network, it, it took her out, and she's trying to get in. <clears throat> You are co-host, please check. There's nobody in the waiting room anyway. Okay, <laughs> thank you, ma'am. You can send her a text message. Okay. I, I just sent her a message on WhatsApp. I don't know why she's not sending it. Okay, uh, do, we take, do we take my my speech, or do we take Dr. Elumelu or Dr. Bashir? Grab you. I've seen them, they are on board. Uh, Ma'am, let's go ahead with your speech while the, every one of them gets set. Okay. Um, Dr. Yakubu, can you share? Can you share the press release for me? It's, it's a word document. I I have issues with my device. Sharing screen is a challenge for me. I don't know why. Let me see. Um, and now <clears throat> I'm actually using my a handheld device, so can't see uh, what okay. to share. I would, yeah. I'm also using my handset. My laptop behaves funny. Let me see. I can. Okay, I, I think I can do that. Let me see. Um... Sorry, he's saying it's unsupported document from here, so can't open it. Oh dear. Yes. Ma'am, why will you do that? I think we bring on Dr. Akyong if he's ready. Good evening. Good evening. Happy. Okay. Good evening. 
I'm seeing Dr. Agu's screen. Okay. Yes, she was sharing her screen. She was about to start. But there were only 25 or 28 people. So we told her to mm. wait for more people. And so now we have to... Let me see if I can share my own screen. Okay. Let me see if I can do that. Yeah, if not, I will be a little... It says it will stop other screen sharing. Do you wish to continue? Let me go ahead with that. Okay. I believe. She can I stop screen sharing. Uh, okay. If I share, if I share, it will stop her. Okay. Okay, let me try. So save time because we have people waiting. Um, let me, oh my gosh. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, good evening, everybody. Dr. Akshon Olumelu is on board, a consultant in sociology from National Hospital. And uh, we're so glad that uh, she's going to lead this discussion on uh, teamwork for better patient care because um, um, anesthesia and uh, the whole gamut of a matrix system. So you need to have a very good teamwork to get whatever outcome you so desire. So Dr. Elimelio, the floor is yours, please. Just give me one moment. I All did right. not fix my... Um, on the, on this one now. Okay, oh. maybe why don't you go on... Um... Just sorry, just give me a moment. Let me do, yeah, put on slideshow. Okay, perfect. Uh -huh. Let me put on slideshow for some reason. Okay, from current slide. Okay, and then, oh God, goodness gracious me. I'm as bad as every other person. I'm sorry, um, I got a little bit caught up in all this. I was trying to do a slideshow, but um, you can do F5. I can do F5. Okay, thank you, dear. F5. Here we where is that again? Mm. That's the problem when some of us who are technophobes. Um, okay, okay, I'm getting there, and I do apologize for being a bit of a technophobe. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, let me go back. So, yeah. my name is Dr. Afion Victoria. Happy Anesthesia Day to everybody, teachers, trainers, residents, lovers, practitioners, providers of anesthesia. I will try to be as fast as possible. I tend to speak a lot, but I will do my best. So I am presenting Teamwork for Better Patient Care. <laughs> and, uh, have oh, you seen my Asha. screen? Yeah, we can see. Can you see it now? Uh, no. Not yet. Oh my goodness. I really am a technophobe. Okay, let me go back again, escape. Um, come back here, my apologies again. Um, return to meeting. Um, more, oh gosh, I, screen share, and then the PowerPoint. Um, I think I'm having a bit of challenge getting to screen share and also get it. Yeah, in. yeah, no, no, it's coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, from beginning. Beautiful. Can you see it now? Beautiful, so let me hurry up here. Yeah? So I wish everybody a happy World Anesthesia Day 2021. Um, this is the team a lot of people are familiar with and we love, and I love this team. A bit more patriotic. Yeah, uh, team. <laughs> oh, well, good. good. Do I continue? Dr. Limelo, I think you can take off your video. 
your there, there seems to be a network issue on your side, so the screen show is not coming up. It's still rolling. Wonderful. It's still rolling. Okay. Trying to share. Maybe okay, phone okay. network or something. So if you switch off your video, perhaps that will. Yeah, that will help. Uh, help. Okay. Yes. Oh, I really am sorry with this. Uh, yeah, yeah, just we learn every day. And see whether that will help. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Done to meeting. Why is my phone disconnected? Some reason I am at the meeting. Stop video. Good. Does it help? Um, maybe still rolling and. Um... No, I think I pressed on stop video. Yeah, I know. The, the screen sharing is just rolling, trying to come up, but we've not seen anything. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Let me try another approach. If you do see, let me know. Of course. Do I change this? Are you seeing anything? Uh, not yet. Not just yet. Wonderful. Do I stop maybe sharing? Start, maybe to start, stop sharing and start it again. Again, exactly. Okay. Share screen. Presentation, PowerPoint. Um, share. Is it, is it coming up? Still rolling. Still rolling. Yeah. I'm, I'm at a loss now what to do. Maybe my network is not so great. Maybe. Mm -hmm. just, um... I'm at a loss. Hey, can I start? Can I try and share my own? Okay. Who can start? Okay, perfect. Somebody is that for Dr. Lumelu or something? That's Dr. Ago. Okay, Dr. Ago, I think she's on. Can she come on board and uh, start her presentation, please? Hello, yeah, Dr. I'm Ago. seeing her screen. I'm seeing Dr. Ago's screen. Yes, Dr. Ago, are you there, please? Hello, Dr. Agu, are you there? Hello, I'm here. Yes, can you start? Okay, let me please? start sharing. No, no, no. no. Okay. okay, this, uh, this, yeah. uh, yes, uh, what that is, she's a dead team is a uh, stronger team for better patient care. Somebody is using two devices. My outline is as follows. Introduction, brief history of world at the CISA day, teamwork in healthcare system, elements of successful teamwork, summary, conclusion, etc. My work introduction. World Anesthesia Day, also known in some countries as National Anesthesia Day or ITA Day, is an annual event celebrated around the world on the 16th of October yearly to commemorate the first successful demonstration of dietary ETA anesthesia on 16th October 1846 by Morton at Massachusetts General Hospital. That's why right, nearly 175 years have been passed since that. And the countless breakthroughs that have succeeded, succeeded it. Nearly 5 billion people continue to lack access to safe and aesthetic practice. In the light of this ongoing neglect, Global Awareness Day, like World and Anesthesia Day, can be a powerful advocacy tool for mobilizing political will for educating the general public and enforcing achievements of the global and community. 
World and the Caesar Day is celebrated every year by World Federation of World Federation Society of Anesthesiologists, WFSA. And almost 150 countries take part in this celebration. Each year, the World and the Caesar Day, World and the World Federation of Society of Anesthesiologists focus on a different theme or a different anesthetic care theme. This helps to explain the varied diverse and critical roles that anesthesiologists play in patients' well-being. This year's team is stronger team for a better patient care. Teamwork it can be defined according to website dictionary as work done by several associates with each other doing a part that all subordinating personnel, personal personnel prominence in the efficacy of the whole. It can also be defined as the deliberative effort of a group to achieve a common goal in order to complete the task in the most effective and efficient way. Teamwork is when individuals work together to achieve a common goal. In the anesthesia is very critical in ensuring, is very critical to ensure patient safety. In like, like in aviation, evidence from critical care measures increasingly show that inadequate teamwork is one of the common reasons for preventable errors. Medical training should therefore promote team facility and not just capacious brain and rumble hands. It's time to encourage more we and less me. After the 1935 crash of the B-17 bomber. It was lamented that the modern plane is too much for one man to fly. In the same vein, the modern man is too much for one clinician to manage. Therefore, teamwork should be employed. Teamwork means cooperative effort to achieve a common goal. That is better patient care. Without effective teamwork, Self-question care may be an elusive thing. It's not just enough to demand teamwork. We also need to practice and perfect the team structure. Team, teamwork, that's together everyone achieves more. What, is there any need for teamwork in healthcare? Yes, a healthcare system that supports Effective teamwork can improve the quality of patient care. They can also enhance patient safety and reduce workload issues that cause physician burnout. Teamwork is necessary in health system because it enhances patient safety. It also improves clinical performance. It cuts down on medical errors. It is patient's concern about treatment and procedures. Patient can always uh, get information and be reassured that many people are there for him. Teamwork also creates efficiency and lower the health cost. It also reduces burnout. What are the features of a successful team? When we are talking about team, it can, it can be multidisciplinary team, can be among colleagues, but the essence is to work together for the good of the patient. What makes a successful team? Leadership is the most important, uh, one of the important things that make team a success. When we're talking about leadership, we're not talking about being a boss or being a, a, a person that is just at the head, just a director, someone that direct or coordinate the team. We are the leadership we are talking about is not the peace, a leader that could
Sorry, Dr. Agu, your line is breaking. We can't hear you. I think one or two Hello? slides now. Yeah, yes. Okay, team what... members have to communicate effectively. Good communication is very important in teamwork. Hello? Yes, Doctor, we can't see your slide. Somebody is there some interference with the slide. You can't see it. Somebody, hello. Ajibu, somebody, Doctor Ajibu, like you are trying to share slide. Yes, I'm using his laptop. Please, okay, Dr. Sorry, Sani, can, Dr. Sani, can you ask people to, to switch up their video? It's interfering with the network. So, yeah. Okay. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. We can hear you. We can hear you, but we okay. cannot see the slide again. We cannot see the slide. Yes, we can see it. You need to start screen sharing again. Okay. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Is the can. screen available now? Yes. 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 Can you see the screen? Hello? Yes. Go ahead. Go yes. Ahead. We can see you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Another, another element of successful team is that Good communication. The importance of good communication cannot be overemphasized because you have to give specific instruction and for everybody to understand clearly. Also, team good team support each other. Any all almost all workplaces have their challenges. But having a strong team can help to uh, overcome some of those challenges. It's uh, one of the uh, uh, reasons, or one of the points there is support for the team members. Team members can help each other improve on their own performance, as well as working together towards improving their professional development, building bonds on trust and reliance on each other can be very important when facing difficult challenges. A good team effectively solve problems collectively or collab in collaboration. A strong team, which is also a cohesive team, develops systems that allow them to collaborate efficiently to complete tasks in a timely manner. A good team also have a clear sense of direction. That is, they have a goal, they have a direction. Team that work together understands their goal for the better patient care. The team understands the strengths and the weaknesses of each team member. And tasks are usually delegated based on the identified strengths and weaknesses. Ad adequate information is important unlike what we have sometimes in our environment, in the theater, maybe the surgeons may decide to hide information from the anesthetist for fear of the patient's uh, case being canceled. It is not good for a successful team. Then teams also need to have adequate resources. Teams cannot work if they don't have enough resources. These resources can be a form of a human, it can be financial resources, or it can be otherwise. If you don't have a, a good a theater environment, the team cannot work together or the team cannot work effectively. 
the anesthetic team or any other team needs things to work with. So those things will be provided for team work to be effective for the better care of the patient. Then teams accomplish their goals when more of both of those things are readily available because they have one goal and they're working towards the same goal. I've talked about communication, which is very important in teamwork and it involves consistently update, updating each person and never assuming that anyone has the same information. You have to be sure that you have the information. Being a good communicator also means being a good listener. And that way, things will work. There are, however, barriers to teamwork. Failure to appreciate the value of different rules, like somebody and uh, sort of claiming that they can also do, work, do the work of an asset or technician claiming to do the work of an asset or the nurse claiming to do the work of further. So they should appreciate their rules. If they don't, there will be there will be barrier and then there will be inefficiency in the team. There's also power struggle among the colleagues. It may be interprofessional or professional colleagues who we have, who will be the most, who will be the best celebrated. This affects the teamwork and also affects the patient negatively. There's also this attitude, the attitude virus. Don't carry your attitude to the theater. Don't carry your attitude to the team. You can leave your attitude at home where you are going. You should be able to learn to manage anger effectively. You have not looked down on anybody. So manage the attitude so that it will not affect the team. The team will be affected when there is frequent change of staff. Uh, Dr. Agu, we can hear you since you've gone again. I think she has gone off again. All right. Okay, Hello? she's coming on again, yes. Okay, uh, a couple of uh, slides, um, you went off, so we can hear you. Can you just uh, take one or two sentences back? Where did you guys stop? Barriers to yeah. teamwork. About yes, to communication. Okay. 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 I said communication is the most important part of teamwork and involves consistency and updating each person. Don't assume that the person knows what is happening or what is going to happen. They update them so that they will be on the same page. You have to be a good communicator, to be a good uh, a good listener, to be a good team member. And however, there are barriers to teamwork. Failure to appreciate the values of different rules. Like you have to do your own part. Don't assume that you can do the other person's part. I said earlier that example of a surgeon trying to uh, maybe claim that or go and do the anesthetic work when he's supposed to be operating on the patient. So each person should stick to their rules so that they can do it better for the good of the patient. There's also power struggle, which also inhibits communication. People struggling to maybe be at the head or at the top, and they, they won't communicate very well, and it affects teamwork. They are talked about the attitude virus. People have different attitudes, but my suggestion is that when you are coming to work, when you are in a team, leave your attitude at home and come to a, in a with good attitude so that you, the team will work together. Then frequent staff changes also complicate staff learning. When the team is supposed to be together for some time. Yes, Dr. Yes. Who are you? Hello? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, poor communication is also a big barrier to teamwork. 
What is a real team? The real desire team. Just broke. I think team should be born there. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You got five minutes to go, please. It's okay. okay. It's okay. The ID team, I say, should be born there. That is, they should be able to stay together for some time. I share this Doctor, in common. You got five minutes, please. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm listening. The core okay. team is usually fixed, like I said. The team members to stay together for a longer time, like, just like, like I said earlier. With that, they can continue to improve and workers will put in their best. And the team, as the team stays together, they also need the resources, like I said earlier. So if they have enough resources, they can work very well. Then the team, they should also be rewarded. Those that are new this award can be a form of promotion, uh, or award, and all those things. Cash, teams that have done well should be encouraged and so that they will do better. Then the administration should also try to support teamwork. We should listen to them and provide what they need. And also coaching and training. Members of the team should also be coached and trained. And their finally, there should be auditing of the team so that they can know whether they are doing well or not. This is in auditing. There can be a kind of debriefing, which is an opportunity for the individuals, the team organizations to learn. They will ask themselves themselves the space on questions on the betterment or how they have performed. What have they done well? What did they, we learn from this experience? What would we have done differently? Or what are we going to do next time? Then they can take a time to learn and listen to one another. And this is all, it should be done almost immediately so that things is still in their head and it's still fresh and they can learn a lot from it. In some way, teamwork means a synergy, synergistic way of working with each person committed and working towards a shared goal. Teamwork maximizes the individual strength of team members to bring out the best. It is therefore a necessity. It is necessary that every necessity should facilitate and build teamwork, team skill, to get the desired outcome for their patient. It is amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, she has finished. Thank you so much, Dr. Angu. Despite the network challenges, you'll be able to uh, succinctly give us um, a reminder of what it is to have a beautiful uh, team and the outcome of that team. We'll just keep the questions and answer one the second um, uh, speaker come on board because we are far behind schedule. Uh, Dr. Elumelu, are you on board now? Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. So let me Please. try and share my screen and get cracking. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Share. Screen sharing. Well, we'll take it like this. My set of my slideshow is not working as fast as I would have liked to, but... Uh, your network may be poor or the system you are using perhaps uh, maybe the system maybe we'll yeah. just go like this um so i'm talking on teamwork for better patient care can you see my screen no 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 it's, it's not it's not up yet it's not up oh, yeah God. it's just rolling just rolling oh my gosh you can stop yes. screen sharing and then start again okay yeah. Maybe it will help. Okay. I think, um, gosh. Let's see. This will come up. Any luck? Are we seeing anything? Uh, not yet. Sincerely, I have no idea what the problem is. Honestly, is it my network? I don't know. I have a good browser. On your laptop, can you see your screen on your laptop? Are you yes, using I, a laptop or a device? I'm using a laptop. Okay. And I can see the screen on the laptop. Oh, um, um, I, I think one more thing. Maybe you didn't allow an external device to, uh, to, to share. That may be a problem. Oh. 
Um, I'm at a loss what to do now. Let me stop again. Or oh, let me see. New share. You want us to share? Let me try PowerPoint. Let's try. Maybe the error is from me. I don't know. I guess so. Oh, oh excuse me, can, 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 you, can you open your slides? Open, open your slides and your what? system. Uh, open your slides. Open the slides on your on your system. On your system. Open My the slides slide on your system, and then and then click on uh, share your screen. Open yeah, the, that's what I've slide. done. The slides are open. Um, I click on. I've clicked on uh, share. new share. Yes. yes, and. I have presentation PowerPoints. I have screen. Let me go on screen mm -hmm. and then share. To me, I'm seeing it, but I don't know if it's um, available for others to see. It's showing me that you are screen sharing. Okay, let me stop again. Okay, right. Dr. Lumelu. Please, can you send your slide to another host to share on your behalf? Hmm. Okay, maybe the other presenter will try and present while I try and yeah. send my presentation to my phone. I don't know okay. if Rabiu is on. Yes, okay. Dr. Rabiu, are you on board? Dr. Rabiu? Hello, Dr. Raibio, are you? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, please, can you commence uh, your presentation? Dr. Raibio, Muhammad is from uh, Bauchi, um, Avocata Valley Teaching Hospital. So he's going to take us on um, uh, something so interesting, uh, the contemporary leadership issue in our various health system. So Dr. Raibio, please, the floor is yours. Okay, let me try and share. All right, perfect. I think we're on board. Uh, it's coming up now. Hello? Yes, we can yeah. see your slide. Can you please on uh, slides? Uh, we can see the PowerPoint. Yeah. Full screen, full screen, please. Perfect. Go ahead. We can see everything now. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Okay, happy World Anesthesia Day to uh, senior colleagues, colleagues, uh, residents, and uh, all the members of the anesthesia family. Uh, in next 20 minutes, I'm going to uh, talk on contemporary.
temporary leadership and management in health care. My name is Dr. Raibi Mohamed Bashir from the Faculty of Anesthesia at Bakar Tapa Balea University of Eastern Hospital. At the end of the presentation, uh, we should be able to understand the relationship between leadership and management, and also to understand the modern key concept of leadership. Uh, at the introduction, because I'm the third speaker, so I try to not to repeat uh, what I expect the other speakers who talk about the world anesthesia, the, so that's why it's omitted in my slides. Uh, I'll go straight to the point. Uh, leadership is doing the right thing, while management is doing it right. As leaders, we have obligation to others, and as managers, uh, we should know how to get the job done. Uh, let me start with the, uh, a popular uh, say by the part of modern uh, management, Peter Drucker, who said, those who seek to lead but fail to manage are not relevant to their organizations or to their societies. Therefore, by way of definition, by management sciences for health, leadership is enabling groups of people to face challenges and achieve results in complex conditions. Let us look at the key component of this definition and how the affect leadership. The key concept in this definition of leadership is enabling others. That is to say, enabling others reflect the transformational leadership ideas we have. Our followers who allow us to lead and we have, as a leader, the moral obligation to help them to grow and succeed on the job. In modern leadership, really focused on the results. Therefore, how we use our monitoring and evaluation tools, data, for better decision and for future results, which we see in the later part of the presentation. However, there is no probably any doubt in anybody's mind nowadays that we work in a complex environment in the public health institutions. Conflicts in terms of government policies, on procurement, on employment, and so many things. Let me... Uh, say something about World Health Organization Health System framework in order to guide our discussion. If you look at the slides on the left side, there are six building blocks, in which the leadership and governance was among them on the bottom of the building blocks. This presentation will focus on the leadership so look at the leadership concept. Leadership and good governance is not merely only just one of the building blocks for well-functioning health system. Rather, it's also a central component of health system strengthening around which the five building blocks revolved around. The next slide will give us a clear picture of what I'm just talking about. You can see the other five building blocks are evolving around the leadership, which include the service we deliver, we offer, and the manpower that give us opportunity to deliver the services and the drug 
products, the vaccine, the technology, and the finances that drive the whole system and the information that we need to work effectively. All these building blocks above, around the leadership. Therefore, leadership is an essential component of health system strength. Let us look at the leading and managing skills. Effectively provide good managerial skills and leadership in our various units, departments, and institutions. Leading skills or practices include inspiring, you need to be inspirational, scanning, focusing, aligning and mobilizing. While managerial skills that are needed include to get the job done, planning, organizing, implementing, monitoring, and evaluation. However, because we've said in the modern or the contemporary leadership, focus on results. Let us look at these managerial skills and leadership skills in relation to outcome or result before we look at them individually. Linking this model, if you look at on the left hand, we have the eight practices, which when they are performed consistently, will build a strong organizational capacity. At the center of the model, you have three cycles, which are the component of strong well-functioning organizations. This include improved work climates, improved management system, improved capacity to respond to change, which is one of the fundamental challenges in our system. This will result in improved services and ultimately improved health outcomes. Let us look at the leading and managing practices or skills we needed in our practice and our leadership careers. Leading skills, as a leader, you need to be inspiring, matching words to action. That is to say, you act in accordance with what you say. Demonstrating honesty in interaction with your subordinates, and having confidence in your staff and acknowledging the contribution of others. The previous speaker was uh, mentioning this part of the point. Not to, in order to demonstrate a good leadership, to provide a good teamwork, a leader must always acknowledge the contribution of others, not to take the credit alone. Also, we should inspire as a role model for creativity in our workplaces, innovation, and learning. As a result, the organization will display a climate of continuous learning, and the staff will show their commitment indeed, even when setbacks occur. Identifying stakeholders' needs and priority by recognizing the trends, opportunities, and risks, thereby looking for the best practices. And it is also important as a leader to know yourself, organization, government, and government policies. This will need yield the people around you 
to have up-to-date knowledge of their patient, clients, their system, organization, and it is context. You also know how their behavior affects others, which is very important. Another practices of skills. As a leader, we should focus on identifying critical challenges in our institutions, units, departments, articulating the mission of strategies whereby we link those strategies to the goals we want to achieve or results through determining the key priorities for action, thereby creating a common picture for our desired results. It is important for every leader to know that organization's work is directed by a well-defined mission, strategy, and priorities. Therefore, it is doing the right thing to bring out those priorities Leading skills also encompasses aligning and mobilizing. It is important to know that ensuring consistency in daily actions will facilitate a strong team to avoid double standards as a leader. This will unite the stakeholders around an inspiring vision you have as a leader because it may result in the organization work which is directed by well-defined mission strategies and priorities so that the objectives goals will be achieved as we said the modern leadership and management based on results it looks at the managing skills or practices that as a manager we need to have in order to get the job done. Planning. We should always plan to achieve a set intentional results. Through organizing which encompasses processes, the resources needed, the structures to facilitate operations and actions that we plan to achieve. While implementing activities, we should also look at the all efforts put together or contributed towards achieving that particular results. Monitoring and evaluation is an important managing skills that has been overlooked even at various institutions because of no clear cut of this cost uh, value. However, monitoring and evaluation will give you a clear picture of actions and results, comparing actions and results against what was planned using a feedback data obtained in order to adjust your plans, structures and processes that is the uh, a process you put to obtain the results in order to get a better result in future. In summary, leadership and management are complementary skills that can be learned. Contemporary leadership and management focus on achieving results. Leadership can occur at any level, units, departments, institutions, Leadership 
should take some knowledge and take courage. Why said by his uh, blessed memory, Nelson Mandela. By conclusion, leadership and management in healthcare are two distinctive and complementary systems of action in our contemporary healthcare settings. It has its own function and characteristic activities. Both are necessary for success in an increasingly complex health institution in our time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Raibu. Despite the network challenges, I think you've been able to go through it seamlessly. I think uh, there will be a lot of uh, contribution and comment because these are the core of what uh, the team of this year's celebration and um, where there is success, definitely uh, leadership and management skill of, of the headship um, is a pointer. So um, we just take the last speaker, then we we'll come to uh, comments and questions. Uh, Dr. Elumelu, are we set now? Are you there? Um, my yeah, God. perfect. Yeah, perfect. Okay. I have no idea how we're going to do it. Can you hear me? Can you see? Yeah, we can see. We, we, we can see that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going on a different tangent to cut off everybody's interest. So I'm speaking on teamwork for better, better patient care. Um, today is World Anesthesia Day. At the bottom of the screen there, can you see one of the best football teams in the world? Anybody can argue with me later, but that's a team. I'm going patriotic now. I'm showing a Nigerian team. And feminist, I'm showing the female team. These are all various teams working together to achieve their set goals. So basically, what's a team? A group of people coming together for a specific purpose. And um, another definition could be any group of people organized to work together or interdependently in order to cooperatively meet the needs of their customers. In this case, as healthcare workers, our patients, and meet their needs by accomplishing a purpose or a goal. Um, you look down there, you have um, this little cartoon where you see people working together. They identify their targets or challenge and um, think together the two ideas, work out a strategy that will work for the situation, for that clinical situation, for that challenge, for that program. And then this collaborative way gives um, leads to increased efficiency and improved performance. And that's what this little cartoon is showing. And this is something we've all come across with being it. A team means together, everyone achieves more. What are the fundamental elements for a team? You have to have and All right, thank okay. you. And so, um, another way to look at teams, and this is in the general um, perspective of teams, you know, there's a four step approach assess the challenge or the objective you plan execute and you evaluate that's the four step approach and of course teams could be ad hoc teams that are set up for you know short term goals you want to carry out this particular surgery or you want to do like maybe the end of year party or something and you can have permanent teams that are fixed and work regularly like our regular teams for carrying out regular anesthetics during the course of the the day. So we move on. What are the components of an ideal team? The size could range. You could have small teams of one to two people. You could have medium sized teams of three to five people and larger teams of above five. Ideally, the size should be between five to nine. But in reality, in our anesthetic practice for day to day um, anesthesia, we tend to have three to four in a team. There must be a team leader who coordinates the team who liaises with management, 
who um, encourages and mentors the team members, works on their strengths and weaknesses, balances their strengths and weaknesses, and keeps the team going, be it a permanent team or an ad hoc team. And of course you have your team members who could be any number as stated before, and you must have um, in the, amongst the team members, a recorder or a secretary or a scribe, and you have somebody who will function as a quality advisor, who will liaise with the team leader, as well as other team members. As we go along, we'll see a bit more about um, the, the, the dynamics of a team, which has been spoken actually to by the two first speakers. What are the features of a successful team? One, there should be clearly defined goals as stated before. Members should be able to speak freely. Members should support each other. There should be collaborative problem sharing and not abandoning of problem to one person carrying the basket, so to speak. There should be adequate information to be able to plan, strategize and execute. There should be adequate resources in terms of human resources and things to work with. And this is where management comes in. There should be mutual trust amongst the members of the team. There shouldn't be, ego should not be allowed to play in or malice. And at the end of the day, there should be team accomplishment of stated goals. For us as healthcare providers, our goal is to get our patient healthy and uh, better uh, with minimum of challenges or adverse events. So we move on to this teamwork in healthcare and I'll try to be as fast as possible because we've lost some time. Do we need teamwork in healthcare? Absolutely we do need. Why? There is increasing complexity and specialization of healthcare these days. We have patients with increasing comorbidities, two or three comorbidities. Currently, there is an actual global workforce shortage worsened by the ongoing pandemic. Healthcare workers have died, healthcare workers are ill, healthcare workers have suffered burnouts, and there is a um, increased migration or poaching of workers from the more affluent countries to the more affluent countries. Remember that there is a push to reduce individual error and adverse events. That is, you know, con continuous assessment of healthcare. And there's a push for safer working hours for patients and for healthcare workers. Now in, in healthcare, the team, healthcare team has different professionals with different skills, all working differently but with the common goal of patient care. One person, one doctor working alone, he cannot do it all and he can never do it flawlessly. So teams come in and you find teamwork is like an evolving and continuous evolving aspect um, concept in current healthcare. Why do we need teams in healthcare management? One, to overcome human error as stated before. Two, to improve patient care. Three, to improve productivity. Four, to improve patient satisfaction. And five, to reduce costs. These are you know, a few of the things that we get. And for the team to work very well, there should be ability for the members to cooperate and communicate effectively with each other to achieve the common goal, which is flawless patient care. And of course, teamwork is, as stated before, an important factor in healthcare and patient safety. Um, this is another long definition. I will jump that. Now you see with this, you have different people with their different abilities and skills coming together to sort out the jigsaw and make a beautiful, sort out the jigsaw um, beautifully. And that is what we're trying to do when we talk about um, teamwork in healthcare, different strengths, different weaknesses, different competencies, but you solve a common problem. So what are the types of teams we have in healthcare? We start with management teams, administration, at the ministry, at the government, at the head of a um, hospital, head of department. Then you have your departmental teams. You have your anesthesia teams that give anesthesia, an anesthesia every day during the course of work that take calls. You have specialized teams like your Code Blue or CPR team. You have some teams like disaster management team, which is not beyond just anesthesia. This in, uh, you know, involves other healthcare providers. You have things like infection prevention team quality control team, specialized tumor board teams when you have to do surgery for a particular patient. Then you have, for instance, teams for specialized surgery, such as cardiac outreach surgeries that have happened in some of our teaching hospitals. You have people that come from the diaspora and they work with 
people from different departments and carry out specific cardiac outreach uh, surgeries. And you have like conjoint twin uh, surgery team we had in National Hospital. And I'll show you a beautiful picture with so many people in this picture. You have surgeons, you have management represented in red, my humble self in front, my head of department behind there, residents, anesthesia technicians, periop, everybody is represented in this picture. This was a specialized team for a single project. And that goes to emphasize what we talk about teamwork in healthcare. I also mentioned diverse backgrounds, doctors, technicians, pharmacists, nurses, everybody must possess their own core clinical skill but everybody's working for a common purpose, which is the patient. There has to be good evaluation of the patient, good evaluation of the situation, good evaluation of our target, be it surgery, ICU care, teaching or whatever. You have to assess, you have to assess the patient, the situation, and still assess each other within the team. There must be good communication. This cannot be overemphasized. With, to the team leader, from the team leader to the members, amongst the members themselves, and nobody should be afraid to speak out if they see there is a challenge that would lead to adversity. And the team must be flexible to work within themselves. Anything could happen. Somebody could be ill, somebody could be lagging in work, others should be able to step up to be able to achieve their team. Now factors that help teamwork and growth include, as I mentioned, common goal, resources, a good team leader, good chemistry and understanding between members. There must be training and retraining. There must be quality control and re-evaluation. Everybody must have, be adaptive. There should be lateral thinking. Sometimes situations arise and you have to think of a different way to overcome it. You mentioned open communication, especially purposeful listening on the part of team members and the team leader. So you hear what even the most junior person is telling you chew on it and apply it. And the team ideally should be kept together to grow in strength, but there must also be flexibility to be able to add, um, accommodate people who may maybe go and leave, people who might be ill, people who suffer burnout or whatever situation that comes out. So you'll be able to co-opt other members into the team, be it a standalone team, be it a long-term team or an ad hoc team. But everything is to improve patient care and efficiency of care. So with good teamwork, you have improved patient outcomes, you have increased staff satisfaction, you have reduced incidence of burnouts. When you have bad teamwork, there will be a total lack of coordination. Patients have poorer patient outcomes. You have staff burnout, people just drop and leave and they're not interested. And you, it would translate to greater um, dissatisfaction on the part of the patient, patient's relatives, and management, and would, of course, be translated to higher costs. There are studies that have corroborated these things. So in anesthetic practice, what kind of teams do we have? Our standard clinical teams. We have teaching and training teams, like update courses, like outreach and, and training for people. You have, for instance, the Code Blue team. You have specialized surgical teams where the anesthet anesthetist is incorporated, incorporated in, like this uh, ERAS team, Enhanced Recovery After Surgery team. For example, in the pandemic, we have critical care team and you have anesthetists cooperated into the COVID ICU. These are some of the teams that we have these days. And of course, we have transport teams used for the transportation of critically patients. These are some examples of teams that you come across in anesthetic practice. And the anesthesia team basically consists of the anesthesia provider, the physician or nurse anesthetist, the anesthetic nurse, your anesthetic technician, very, very handy and important part of your team. And other workers you might work with together with in the hospital, the pharmacists, respiratory therapists, the surgeons, perioperative nurses, ODP, a sanitation crew, without them, you can not What's the problem now? Uh, anesthesia team, what are the objectives of the anesthesia team? Basically, to render safe anesthesia to the patient keep the patient safe and alive, keep the patient unharmed and comfortable. So basically objectives, core objectives of any anesthesia team is safe induction, maintenance, and emergence for anesthesia and sedation. Patient safety, patient safety, patient safety. We must minimize errors and minimize adverse events. Patient must have good analgesia, either after general or regional anesthesia. There must be no side effects, no nausea, no vomiting, no discomfort, no problem. 
safe transportation of the critically ill in cases of where the anesthesia team is transporting the critically ill person. person. We must maintain high standard of patient care in the ICU or HDU. And of course, we all say that anesthesia is 99% boredom and 1% terror. When that 1% terror comes, we must be able to handle that crisis. You know, anesthesia is not just sleep, but life keeping the patient alive. So the anesthesia team incorporating all these members work together to achieve these objectives. We're used to it, but we must continue to emphasize this. Basically in anesthesia team, everybody is an important and necessary link to the chain of safe anesthesia. Motivation, as I said, is as mentioned earlier by the previous speaker is important. There must be recognition where possible. Awards may be given, maybe cash, maybe not. Positive appraisals, training should be upheld. And of course, social interaction is very important. You must have downtime within the team to, you know, blend better. End of year party, sometimes socializing and things like that. These are all very, very important aspects of this year team. So we blend better as a family. So um, I'm rounding up now and I'll show you a picture of my anesthesia resident providing anesthesia under supervision in the theater there. This is a picture of our COVID team. That is an ad hoc team. This picture consists of both the anesthetists and other healthcare workers. It's a cooperative team. And this is anesthesia team on an outreach teaching CPR to a school in the last pre world anesthesia. <laughs> and this is realizing our Technicians, our youth. Uh, uh, we we on, uh, June, July. Oh, together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. So I've shown a few diagrams. I've done my best at um, describing and um, teamwork in anesthesia practice. And I will say thank you to everybody. And I'll wish well, you a okay. happy world anesthesia. You join me in this virtual cake to celebrate World Anesthesia Day. Before I run away, I'm going to show you one more. I'm a so I'm going to show you the synchronized swimmers swimming as a team. You can imagine how much training and work and motivation on the left. And you can see that team with the medals. That is what we should aim for as anesthesia providers working as a team. Thank you very much. And um, I'm very happy to take questions. All right, thank you, Dr. Limeri. Thanks a lot. Despite the initial light, uh, <laughs> we were able to overcome it, and we had a very wonderful um, presentation <laughs> of teamwork and illustrated teamwork. I think we should have it all over the place so that people see the pictures better than the wordings. Thanks a lot so much. All right. So we thank everybody who has glued over 100 now. I think the last time I checked, we we're 99 or, or 90 or so. I guess we're more than 100. I Before the question contribution, let me call on the president for a speech so that uh, we can get going. Uh, Madam President, are you there, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, have you been able to help me share my screen? Uh, no, my system is not supporting it. Could not open it. Okay, okay. Uh, let me see. I don't even know. Yeah, whatever you're using, just go to SlideShare. It's going to show you where it is, either the document or something. It will open up. But mine is not supporting. I got to it, but um, maybe I don't have the software on my handset to support it. Okay, let me... Let me try. So while Madam President is um, trying to put up our system, uh, if you got questions, can it be put on the chat and I'll try to uh, uh, look at it or I will bring the um, speakers on board and then you can ask um, uh, your question. You can kindly uh, unmute yourself um, while I see your hand raised and uh, we can allow you to, to speak. Um, 
Hello, somebody's uh, video is on. Can you put it out, please? Yeah, they're not this. How much? How much is that? It's on 200. It's on 250. Hello. All right, perfect. Ma'am, I think your screen is up now. Hello, ma'am. We can see your screen. Okay, you can see my screen now. Good. Yeah. Okay. Let yes, me... ma. Very clear. Okay. Um, okay. Um, well, uh, let me stand on existing protocol. I'm, I'm trying to start from the beginning. Um, while the thing is scrolling up, Uh, today is World Anesthesia Day. I stand on existing protocol. I, I apologize that these slides are not uh, in PowerPoint. Um, we were asked by the press to get a document out as a press release. Unfortunately, we were not ready on time. So I will just try to read the little that I can read from, from the uh, document that I have. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, World Anesthesia Day is celebrated every year, uh, 16th of October, 2020, I mean, of every year. So uh, this year's theme is Stronger Teams for Better Patient Care. And, um, we know who we are. We are the Nigerian Society of Anesthetists. Uh, this is an association of anesthetists from all the states of the Federation. And our aim is to uh, help in the enhancement of all aspects of anesthesia specialty in Nigeria. So um, according to the history of anesthesia, 16th of October, 1846, was when um, William Thomas Green Morton made a successful demonstration of the use of ether. So that is why sometimes they call it World Ether Day. And um, on his tombstone, it was written that this was the man that to whom, before whom uh, surgery was a pain. And after, uh, due to his work, Surgery now is possible and is painless. Uh, despite having 170 years now since uh, anesthesia was first, uh, let's say, founded or started or initiated, we have had so many breakthroughs, so many new drugs, so many things. But at the same time, there have also been lack of access it's been said that nearly 5 billion people continue to lack access to safe anesthesia practices all over the world. And it will surprise us to note that Nigeria is among the people contributing to these 5 billion that don't have access to safe anesthesia. Our figures are very uh, frightening. We have less than one anesthetist to 200,000 population. And even then, most of the anesthetists are in the, um, you know, in the cities or the big towns. So leaving the people in the outskirts or in the villages without access to safe surgery and safe anesthesia. So those are the challenges that we have. So we've talked about teamwork. I'm not going to remove, I mean, I'm not going to repeat all these things. Uh, but what we should know is that good teamwork leads to improved patient outcomes, 
And bad thing work, of course, is the converse is true. It will lead to poorer patient outcomes, lack of coordination, and there'll be burnouts and higher costs on the patients and on the staff. So what are we called to do today? I will say that uh, the celebration continues because this year's celebration falls on a Saturday and many people might not have been able to do all these things. So you still have the opportunity to share what you love about your team on social media. Uh, you can download the World Anesthesia uh, Toolkit. We shared it on all the um, platforms of NSA. And then um, you can identify the steps that you can take to strengthen your team. What are those things you think is lacking in your team that you need to add? You can identify it and you can also create awareness. You can promote your team. You can uh, talk to policy makers. You can talk to your hospital management about what you think you need to do for your team to be a better and a stronger team. And then you, you can uh, do advocacy. Part of the, the things we are lacking in Nigeria is uh, a strong advocacy team. And uh, I think this is an opportunity for us in our individual hospitals and wherever to tell people about what we do. A lot of people don't know who anesthetists are. A lot of people don't know the work that anesthetists do. And even among the healthcare providers, the doctors, the nurses, and uh, pharmacists, and all that, still among the healthcare providers, many people don't know the real role, of the real job of an anesthetist. So this is our opportunity to create awareness. I put down some recommendations based on some questions I was asked by the press about the challenges we have in anesthesia and what we can do to increase the number of anesthetists and bridge the gap. So uh, these are not as uh, exclusive and they, it is not an exhaustive list. This is an opportunity for us to say other things that we think that we need to do. So we, uh, here we have provision of incentives to residents in anesthesia training. Provision of more training centers in the teaching hospitals and federal medical centers and specialist hospitals. Then we need to encourage the employment of more anesthetists, anesthesia, anesthesia residents, medical officers, consultants, and uh, specialists. Then we need to... Um, encourage the provision of adequate training facilities. A lot of centers have been started, but they don't have the facilities to train residents. Some do have partial accreditation and some don't even have accreditation at all or the accreditation are slabs. This is an opportunity to tell our different hospital management that we need to improve the facilities we have for training, okay? And then uh, last but not the least among my recommendations is that we need to have provision of adequate equipment and infrastructure for anesthesia, pain management and critical care services. If these things are put on, I believe it is my strong conviction that we should be able to have more enrollment of uh, doctors into the different training programs. And of course, all the things that NMA, MDCAN, uh, NARD have been going on strike for, for different reasons, should be put on board to increase, uh, to improve the working conditions of the doctor. And uh, I didn't put it in the recommendation, but it is uh, expected that this should be done. So it's a call also to the government that please, this is the time to do the best for the doctors and especially for the anesthetists. Also to the uh, different uh, colleges that train uh, anesthetists. It's a call for action for us to increase the numbers. We need to scroll up our numbers. We need to uh, improve the numbers that we're producing. I was watching the... Um, 
graduation or in, uh, of uh, the National College. And I also uh, watched the one for the West African College. And you will see where surgery is uh, graduating uh, in the convocation surgery is graduating 100 fellows. For example, ob Gain is graduating 80 fellows. You have an anesthesia producing 10 fellows, 12 fellows. How on earth are these people going to be able to meet up with the challenge to uh, give anesthesia for the teaming populations of large uh, different specialties or uh, surgical specialties, uh, ob -GYN and all that. So we need to up our game in the training programs. Whatever is the limitations, we need to remove all those limitations and really uh, see how we can, let's say each college should be able to graduate 50 anesthetists in a year. We should make that our target. And uh, it's not uh, by inbreeding, you have a national fellowship and then you say, oh no, I need to get West Africa. And then you go and get West Africa. That is not two fellowships. That is still one fellow with two qualifications. So it does not improve the numbers. So uh, while I'm not discouraging people from having two fellowships, I'm saying that we really need an actual increase in the number of anesthesia, both at diplomat, uh, membership level, and fellowship level. Um, I want to thank you for your uh, audience. I uh, will look forward to questions and contributions and all that uh, while we continue to celebrate. I believe it's going to be a week long uh, celebration going into the best part of uh, next week. So once again, congratulations and happy World Anesthesia Day celebration to everybody and happy National Anesthesia Day to Nigerian Society of Anesthetist Members. Thank you and God bless. Bye. Oh, thank you so much, Madam President. This is so wonderful. And uh, I actually jot down the last statement that goes to the colleges and our wonderful examiners, the trainers, and of course the candidates. Uh, we pray and wishing them the very best in the forthcoming exams. And um, I, I think um, this year's celebration may be a turning point that we really need to put in place whatever we're going to do to ensure that these numbers goes, go up because um, the, the, there's a technology now to enhance training. There's opportunity, a platform that NEC can provide for um, the weekly webinar is there, which I believe vehemently is enhancing um, uh, cross fertilization of ideas across zones. Uh, the era of um, we have this uh, cocoon training where every center to himself is no more. The technology has opened up the space now. You, you could be in Medjugorje and see get the very best from colleagues elsewhere. So we hope that this will go a very long way because uh, we are lagging behind in terms of the number. Man, we're so grateful and uh, uh, we, we, we're happy for uh, this speech. Um, I, I checked the chat forum and uh, there's just one question. And I, I want to believe our presenters are still on because this is question is directed to um, to the presenters. And maybe, uh, Dr. Agu, are you on, please? Hello, Dr. Agu, are you on? Dr. Elumelu, are you on? Yes, I am. Good yes, evening Dr. again. Dr. Bashir, thank you. So you're going to take this question, your perspective wow. and uh, Dr. Bashir. <laughs> Uh, somebody, Dr. Yusuf, said, how does, um, he said, how do you go about addressing the leadership puzzle among stakeholders, especially as a pioneer and a theologist? I guess what he's trying to say is that you're a new fellow and um, you find yourself employed in a setting where you have um, this uh, matrix cadre of professional, maybe nurse anesthetists, you have the technicians around there and all medical officers who have been there for a very long time. Now, there were, before you came, somebody was coordinating a team. Now you are the leader. 
definitely there is that. I did experience it. And I, I know a lot more people are going to experience it too. So how do you go about it? Your perspective, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. I, I think it starts with having clearly defined clinical rules written out in black and white, which would be from management. That will be the beginning. Um, most times management may not actually have a very clear idea of um, defined rules. In some centers, please, I'm not accusing, it's not a blanket accusation, but um, if you have clearly defined rules and duties, this is what the physician anesthetist is to do. This is what the nurse anesthetist is to do. This is the role of the trainee technician. This helps to reduce friction. But then if one gets to a center like that and they don't have such clearly defined rules, then it behoves on the pioneer anesthesiologist or physician anesthetist to sit and liaise with his colleagues, not in that center, de delineate those rules and then speak to management. But also, above all, the person should use wisdom. Your own personal, um, how would I say, comportment, composure helps to, um, how would I say, diffuse the situation. Because sometimes you come in as a pioneer anesthetist and the person who has been there for donkey years feels threatened by you. Now that person too might react with hostility or trying to um, protect what he feels is his own. In today's presentation, explaining and everything. But above all, um, in the eyes of the law, we must never forget in the eyes of the law, a physician takes legal responsibility for the patient. So if the nurse anesthetist has been there carrying out good anesthesia over the years and you come in, you must supervise. That needs to be expressly told and clarified. And um, I think with wisdom and with patience, one will be able to wear them out. Um, I'll give an in instance. When I started anesthesia in one of the teaching hospitals in the South South, we had a good team of very competent um, nurse anesthetists. And then we also had uh, the team of physician anesthetists working together. And uh, at that point there was um, a regulation that no anesthesia should start with just the nurse anesthetist. There must be a physician anesthetist. So here I was a new resident being called to stay with them to start putting this patient to sleep. I didn't know Jack but I dutifully followed them, watched, closed my mouth, and I made sure I had a good rapport with them. I just humbled myself, listened, and you know, got along very well with them during work as well as socially. And then that helped to bring down barriers. We opened up to each other. I'm telling my own personal experience, I wasn't the head, I was a new resident there, but that helped. And some of those ladies, I'm still friends with them till today, so many years after. So your personal approach would also help to diffuse the situation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank I you hope so I much. got it. Yeah, thanks for your input and your perspective. Uh, Dr. Bashir, are you there? Hello, Dr. Bashir? Dr. Ibu? All right, Madam President, you, you are, can, can you share some your perspective on that? Uh, let me uh, let me start by saying that I totally agree with Dr. Elumelu. I had a similar experience um, when starting residency, where there was uh, uh, some kind of uh, you know issue between nurse anesthetists and physician anesthetists. And then moving from there as a young uh, trainee, just having 
uh, pass diploma in anesthesia to another center to be a pioneer. The fight was, it, it didn't have part two. It was just uh, so much. But yes, the issue is that building, team building is something is, uh, is better uh, practicalized. It's not a theoretical thing. So you need to, you know, like make friends of everybody, be humble, be humble, be humble, talk less and do more. Uh, you know, action, they say, speaks louder than words. So if you're talking about leadership, they say, if you want to say you are a leader, you need to look back and see how many people are actually following you. So uh, it's not just by saying I'm the boss, I'm in charge, I'm a doctor, you must have the, the, uh, um, the team leader by force. No, you have to earn the leadership by your leadership style. And you have to earn the respect of the team. I have to show everybody that they are important. And you know, when you really don't know what to do or you are new in a place and you have uh, junior people in the team who are used to doing it, it's better to get their support and their cooperation by being honest, saying, look, I'm not really quite sure how you do it here. Can you please tell me? Or what are the doses of drugs? What dose of drugs do you use in this kind of scenario? Or what will be your choice of drug in this place? You know, and uh, when you do that, you know, they will, you know, open up to you and many of them will be willing to support you. Of course, you don't expect everybody to uh, fall in love with you immediately or to accept your um, the fact that you are the team leader or you're the consultant or you are in charge. So there will be some differences here and there. But by and large, with time, with patience, it's always good to win the support of every member of the team and carry everybody along. Like Dr. Agu said in her presentation and also reiterated by uh, the other speakers, communication is key in team building. Um, you need to be able to communicate and you need to have uh, a, a closed loop communication. That is tell somebody what to do or what you would like them to do. It's important to be sure that they understand you, that you're on the same page so you can like say, um, give me 200 milligram of uh, propofol and then expect the person to say, this is 200 milligram of propofol giving, how do I give it IV? And you say, yes. And you know, so you clearly understand. But if you just turn out the instructions, you're not sure the person has understood you. Like, let me just tell you what happened recently. I said, um, 15 milligram of, uh, I think maybe it was a Esmeron. And the person thought I said 50 milligram and had given, and then she said, uh, sorry, doctor, did you say 50 or 15? And I said, no, 15, it was a child, uh, you know, and that if the person had given 50 milligram, that would have been disastrous will have stayed hours ventilating the patient possibly. So it's important that when you pass information or you, you communicate that everybody understands you and, and all that and keeping healthy relationships, supporting one another when uh, there, there is need to do and uh, enjoying both the good times and the bad times is, is, is key to keeping healthy and strong teams. That is my perspective uh, on this uh, issue. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Madam President. I, I always pick phrases from a statement which uh, you say you talk less and do more. Uh, we yeah. live in a visual society now, and this is straight to the residents, and um, you must up our skills. Don't expect followership to just follow you simply because you came onto the scene and say you are a doctor. It doesn't work. You got to show skill. If you don't have, you can move to a center where that is done and acquire it. 
and you must be on top of your game. It doesn't matter your age, what they want to see. People follow. If you inspire them with the skill you've got. I had the same experience, turbulence when I came. I remember the um, those I met said, no way, a doctor cannot come and lead them after the almost 20 years here. Yeah. I never say a word. I want to advise the method I adopted at work was forced to design a roadmap and a strategic plan for the Department of Anesthesia. And that's where I started from. Secondly, don't remain dormant in the theater or in ICU. Be at the forefront of administration. Get to engage whoever is the medical director one on one. Because that is where the whole thing will end. And once you're on that scene, um, you could also uh, get back to uh, those who are members of the team and ensure that um, you are very magnanimous in uh, your approach. Recently, I asked somebody to give me a drug and um, he mentioned one or three just those I've never had in my life. Uh, my usual way, I never even say a word. I just requested for an alternative drug he's familiar with. So I collected it later on. I called him and said, no, that's not the dose I wanted. So that you don't correct people um, in public. I don't do it. So I, I think, again, is something we need to acquire. Maybe in our curriculum uh, with time, leadership needs to be incorporated uh, in our training. Thank you so much, ma'am. I, I checked the chat. I'm not sure there are other um, um, things there. Let's see if we've got uh, one. Um, uh, somebody said that maybe they probably just a comment. They said the problem is that some centers um, think that uh, nurses are just uh, alternatives and they're cheaper. Um, well, I, I, my perspective is, is that sometimes this come about by what we bring onto the table. If you bring something innovative and you convince management that um, is work is worthwhile and is it works. I tell you, management will buy into it. If you look around, look at the cost benefit of whatever is done. First, engage management, then come back to the team and see how it can be implemented. And I'm I'm very sure you're going to be called upon. And like uh, Madam President did say, be present. You cannot talk about being a doctor or a leader. You are not present. You have to be present. I, uh, the Japanese or the Asians have a management model. They call uh, management by working about. What they simply do, if you have various units, maybe obstetric and oncology theater, whatever, find time to rotate through them yourself, so that you have a feel of the challenges of what is going there and what they do. That's number one. Um, when residents come to my department, I find a week and I'm on call with them. This is very important. If you leave residents in the hands of um, other cadres, I tell you, it's going to bounce back at some point because you are not there. It's just like a father-son relationship. So I think this tidbit we've been given is so beautiful today. Apart from the celebration, uh, this could qualify for a certificate course in management. And as an anesthesiologist, um, you are at the forefront of management. That's just what it is. Um, I, I don't know. I can't see any hand raised or maybe other people have comments um, or questions they want to answer. Any questions, please? Questions from the house? All right. Like somebody so what... asked a question. I don't know whether it has it. been answered. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. The question is raised. Wherever is that? Go ahead, please. There are two hands raised. Somebody wanted to. Dr. Usen, Usen wanted to ask a question. Hello, Dr. Usen. Yeah, Dr. Usen, go ahead, please. Unmute yourself and speak before I speak. Uh, Dr. Usen, are you there? Maybe network chat. You can put it on the chat if you have any network challenges. 
Okay, what, um, uh, let me just, while we're waiting for Dr. Hussein to come on board, let me just say, I, I put my, um, I did my team building, uh, this, I don't know if you can see it. I love my team because it is the best. The NSA team is the best. And we save lives in Nigeria. So I, I, I put up my, uh, my poster, my one woman poster, just to say, to encourage us to say that no matter how small or whatever it is you're doing, be encouraged that what you're doing is key and is vital to what the, uh, the patient care, the overall success of the team. And then um, that we need to do more, we need to do more to get more people into anesthesia we need to do passive and active recruitment of new doctors so that our training programs can be, you know, uh, more robust. And uh, we need to uh, have more training, training centers. Those uh, people that are in maybe federal medical centers that are not accredited for training, what are you waiting for? You are a consultant, you are in an FMC, Get your acts together. Find out from the colleges what you need to get to, to start training and start training. Even in the state uh, government hospitals, state specialist hospitals, there are so many people that could do more to train more people because the, the centers we have are not enough to compare to our population. And uh, while I was going through the the um, statistics of number of anesthetists. I, I found that we still have a very low number of anesthetists in the Northeast. The Northeast is still lagging behind. I know recently uh, Dr. Rabiu commented that why are they giving few uh, posts of Zimeters to Northeast? I just didn't want to start any uh, thing. So uh, that's why we all kept silent. But the point, the problem was that even in the first batch, the ones allocated were not collected. They just didn't, they just didn't step up to even take them. So it was difficult to say, okay, take more. And why were they not collected? Uh, when you, you ask about uh, Taraba State, they say oh, no anesthetists or only one anesthetist. You ask about Adamawa. Adamawa is, uh, is, is doing better now and, and they have stepped up. They've taken their own. You ask about Yobe. I, I can't, I, you can't believe that there's still no anesthetist no consultant anesthetist in Yobe state. Uh, Borno, Borno is picking up, at least uh, Professor Sadiq is there and they are building up. Bauchi uh, is, is coming up. Uh, but still, I, I did a, a program there last year, and it was appalling, appalling that there were general hospitals, no anesthetists, no nurse anesthetists, no nobody. They were just they are not not even oxygen, not even any facility to give anesthesia. So, uh, Gombe State, Gombe is coming up. The Federal Teacher Hospital is speaking up. So what? Why am I just talking? I'm I'm not talking down on the region. I'm saying that these are special needs areas that we need to encourage people actively go and do uh, drives, recruitment drive for residents, for doctors to come into anesthesia in those places. I know that I did that. I did that for some part of Northwest and um, North Central some years ago, 10, 12, 15 years ago. I did that going around, giving lectures, talking about telling people, see, I'm an anesthetist. Would you like to be like me? Um, I'm doing well, you know. This is my car. I have a big car. And, you know, well, it was, it was us for fun. Not that that is what we are to do, but... Um, I mean, things that encourage people, because some people believe that if they do anesthesia, they won't be able to do PP, they won't be able to make money. Uh, people don't know what anesthetists do. They'll be competing with nurses to do uh, uh, procedures for 2,000 naira, 5,000 naira. 
So I had to take it upon myself to go around to hospitals and say, yes, this is this, this is this, this is who I am. And then they will come and they say, I, I want to be honest. I remember when I did that in Casina State, I, was, I did that continuously in general hospital, different general hospitals for about three years. And some of those people recruited, they, they are consultants. Some have been consultants three, four, five years, you know? So what am I saying? We need, it is everybody's responsibility. It is everybody's business to encourage more people to join. Surgeons are recruiting people actively. Obstetricians are recruiting people actively, a pediatricians, internees, and all that. They actively, they go, they say, look, you, I like your face. Come to this so place, I will take care of you. And people come and they tell me, say, ah, I, I love anesthesia, but you know, this professor, this in surgery told me that if I come to surgery, it will make sure I finish the residency in social years and I get a job immediately. That's what people want to know. So why can't, and I say, no, don't worry. I will do that times two. I will do it even better than, than that for you. Don't forget about surgery. And with that, I've convinced one or two or three other people. It may not be so many, but if each one, is telling one person and that one person is telling another person, you will have a multiplier effect. So my call today, please, our time is up. My call is that please let's all of us that are here, 75 of us, let's be a, a change agents. Let's be agents for advocacy, for anesthesia, for building stronger teams, for visibility, for more recognition and all that. And yes, get engaged in management. There's so many anesthetists now that are uh, c marks they are deputy c marks they are directors of this or that, and all that. Let's engage them. Let's engage them. Even the present minister of health in Nigeria has a diploma in anesthesia, and he has a soft spot for anesthetists. Let's engage them. Let's engage them. Let's, this is our time. The best time to act now, uh, to act is now. Thank you very much. And um, if we don't have more comments, uh, we can uh, ask the uh, for announcements. I don't know if the secretary is around to take announcements. Moderator, are you, yeah, can you ma give us the announcements? Yes, ma. Yeah, yeah, ma. All right, okay. secretary. Is on. Okay. Yes, thank you, secretary. Thank you so much. And uh, thank everybody. Yeah, thank for... you very much. Yeah. All right, thanks, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam yeah, President. Good. Thank you, Logito. Thank you for um, celebrating the World Anesthesia Day. I want to thank especially all our teams, all hospitals. In fact, the turnout was even as a weekend, I was thinking that we'll not be able to get anybody, but I'm, I'm so surprised that the outcome in our, on our platform. I'm really grateful to all the centers who sent in their pictures. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. And please just encourage everyone to register for the upcoming conference. We have been seeing the flyers in our emails, in the WhatsApp platform. Encourage everybody around you to send in their abstracts and register for the conference. Thank you very much. Uh, we Thank have you, extended the, the registration for the early bird registration has just been extended to 5th of November to encourage residents to register. Somebody told me that, ah, he told the NSA conference is just for consultants. No, it's for everybody. <laughs> Medical officer, resident, uh, uh, diplomates, uh, member, membership holders, consultants. It's for everybody, every anesthetist, it's even non anesthetists nurse anesthetists. It's for everybody. You can uh, have accompanying persons, people that want to come and listen and see what we're doing. You can even encourage your surgeons, obstetricians, uh, internists, or, or members of the hospital community to register and join us. The more, the merrier. So uh, that's my addition to that. Please don't sign off yet. Um, the, the secretary has told us about the NSA conference. It's November 20, uh, 15th to 21st of November. Uh, this year is a hybrid conference, so you, uh, well, it's now fully virtual, but there will be few people in the location, but it's fully virtual, so you can be wherever you are and get the best. Then I want to announce about the um, 
workshop. We have two pre-conference workshops that have been uh, slated. Um, airway workshop is coming up, is being anchored by the Society for Airway Management International and the Nigerian chapter. And we're going to have our key people like Dr. Kingsley Enoguma, Professor Patrick Elomo, uh, Dr. Ronke um, Adechion. Uh, we have Professor Mary Moshambi, Professor Conan. They will be there. And uh, Professor Imaren Jai, Charles Imaren Jai, they'll be our facilitators on the 15th. And on the 16th of November, we'll have a research methodology proposal and dissertation writing workshop specific for anesthesia. Join us, you're going to have uh, key speakers, our trainers and faculty members of the two colleges, National and West African College and faculty chairs are going to be speaking on the different requirements. Uh, Professor Charles Maringa has a passion for teaching research methodology and dissertation writing and anesthesia, we all know that he is going to be anchoring it along with our team of trainers. So don't miss it. It's going to be 5,000 Naira each. We're opening the registration for the uh, workshops next week. So you can register for the two, for 10,000 Naira, you know? And uh, we're going to have some, some sites, some focal sites, well, you will do a hands-on for the uh, airway workshop. It will all be announced to us in due course. I don't know, have I left out anything? Yes, one more thing, ma'am. Yeah, Yes. go ahead. I, I'm going to pay for five residents for that um, dissertation. But to qualify, you must register for the conference and that workshop. I don't know how they're going to do it. The NSA is going to... Uh, use a system to select those five. After they've registered and paid and participated, NSA will select them. I don't know how they're going to do it, but once they select them, their money will come back to them. Okay. So going to okay. That we will, we will, we will take up the process. Account. Yes, straight to the account for those five. So you register first and do everything. When you're done, and they will do a process and return back your money. So I'm going to do that right away. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, kudos to our PRO, our moderator for the day, Dr. Yakubu Momosani. He's been going to sponsor five residents for the research methodology workshop. Please, please register now, register now, and be with the first five to get that uh, scholarship. And then I want to announce that the NSA has a... Um, uh, giving free registration for all our senior members, all our elders, 70 years and above, our retired senior colleagues, uh, uh, free registration for the NSA conference. They will not pay anything. They will participate in the conference for free from this 2021 henceforth. And also no more membership dues. Annual dues are out. Those that are not life members will be exempt from paying dues. We just need, we have a list. We are going to, we're going to probably put up the list if people will not be offended. And if we have missed out anybody, you can reach out to the NSA secretary or assistant secretary to update the list. Maybe we will go through the zonal coordinators to confirm those people that are in their zones and then we will do uh, letters to them to that effect, and then we get them to register and participate. All they need is to have data in their on their phone or wherever, and uh, Zoom, a Zoom platform, and they are done. They are good. They are good to go. So that is one of the things we were doing it for October first was the World Elders Day. So we decided that we should do something to remember our teachers and mentors, they've put in so much. And um, also uh, September uh, was uh, World Teachers Day to remember our teachers and mentors. So that is in commemoration of those two days, World Teachers Day and World Elders Day. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if I've left out anything, but it's, 
it's not exactly about an hour we started. So I want us to take our videos, put on our videos so that we can take uh, shots. Is there any comments or uh, anything that we have left out? Moderator, any, any other thing? Okay, no, so this will be the, 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 the this will be the last of our webinars for this series till after the NSA conference, and then we will start again the NSA webinar series. So this officially closes our, our webinars for now, but we will keep interacting. We'll keep, we are committed to training and we're committed to excellence. And this year's conference is on professionalism in anesthesia. We need to practice our profession the best way we know how. And we need to do our best to bring up the profile of anesthesia to, to the best it can ever be. Thank you very much for your audience. So can we do the photo shoots? Can we do our videos? I mean, uh, put on your video in your phone or your device. You can take Dr. Usen, Usen, your video is still not on. Hello, Afi, nice to see you. That was a brilliant presentation. And look, please send me your PowerPoints. Please, please, please. I need to use it. Please send me your I PowerPoint. Send <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I was just about to tell the mom that uh, all the presenters should put their PowerPoint so that it could yes. be on the platform. Yes, it's going to be on the YouTube platform. So please, all presenters, kindly we, we put up your presentations or send it to the NSA secretary. Yeah. Um, Thanks to her. Uh, I also enjoyed Dr. Agu's uh, presentation and Dr. Bashir's presentation. It was very nice, very, very, all of them very rich and very encouraging. I mean, you know, things that we need to do, we are doing them every day, but we need to do them better. I think those, those, that is just a reminder for us. Um, who else have we got here? Dr. Babfa, Dr. Beatrice, how are you today? Dr. Wahid, nice to see you. Ah, uh, Dr. Adetoye, we are just seeing your fridge and freezer. Waiting they have <laughs> food day. You're I muted. You're muted. Me. Don't mind me. Napa just uh, took up power a moment ago. So okay. let me appear see my face. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> everybody. Nice to see you. <laughs> this has been a very course. nice experience. Dr. And thanks for then I hope it's not too hot. No, 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 no. It's fine. <laughs> but <laughs> rain, rain has stopped. Rain has yeah. <laughs> uh, We rain are consuming a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> the, the weather We're is not there. praying rain for stopped. the the security situation to improve. Imagine yes. upon all of you, you are secured. No yes. evil will happen to any of you. <laughs> By God's grace. By God's grace. Hello, Dr. Imo. How are you? Hello, Dr. Lai. I'm fine, thank you, Ma. Dr. Yeah. Resson, well, we cannot see you. Hello, Dr. Latoye. Hello, Dr. Latoye. Aha, yeah. Hello, Ma. Good evening, Ma. Nice to see you. Yeah, you are you are Good muted, Dr. Dare, Dr. Olaoye, you are muted. Good evening, Ma. Thank Good evening. Thank you very much. Happy World Anesthesia Day to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Happy you for joining. It's been a nice experience. Which center are you? Federal Medical Center, Butemeta. Okay, wow. Ah, with my friend. That's good. Have you now got um have you now got accreditation? Yes, ma. Uh, both uh, colleges. Thank God. Thank you, ma. Excellent. Excellent. That, that was one of the places I was encouraging them. 
In fact, one time about four years ago, I had to speak to him, take the PMD's number and speak to him and say, please, we need anesthetists, we need residents. You cannot do run a center without residents. And then um, I don't know whether it was that he honored my request or that God just touched his heart. Hello, the chairman. Thank you, ma. I've removed you, your video. Good evening, ma. Hello, how are you, dear? Moriah, why are you so quiet? Good evening, ma. Ah, Dr. Salama, this is unlike you. Good evening, ma. What's happening? What's happening? I was a bit busy, but I enjoyed the um, seminar. It was enlightening. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Dr. Falana, you've removed your video. Uh, Dr. Tejumade Okonlawon. How are you, dear? You are muted, my dear. Thank you, ma. How are you? I'm fine, ma. Thank you, ma. Are you in Lagos? No, UCH, ma. Okay, UCH. Yes, How are the good people of UCH? What of Dr. Adigun? She's fine, ma. We are doing well, ma. My greetings to them. All That's right, thank my, you. My second home. They uh, trained okay. me and nurtured me. And when I was a, uh, I was a a, a, a mobile anesthetist. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank As you, a young trainee, there was really no consultant in my center, so I had to go to do postings in Ibadan, Lagos, and Enugu. So All right. those are my, Thank my you, second ma. homes. Yes, ma. Yes, have ma. a long a, a history with UCH. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. <laughs> and you, when ma. it was time for my part two, they said, come, who is even training you there? Come, let's <laughs> teach you. And they took me and they brushed me up and they, I thank God. I thank yeah, God thank for... You. Late uh, Mama Manubuadu, Professor Lekbe, Professor Shoyawo, all yes. of them, Dr. Shotun B, uh, very, yes. very nice people. Yes, I can't thank imagine. You. you know, they, they taught you how to mentor in practice, mentoring in practice, not the yes. theory, not the one you read from book. You know, very true. It was very, so amazing. Yes, uh, Dr. Shotunbi took me in her car to her house and said, take. She took, gave me her part two book and said, take. Go and write your part. You have passed uh, part one since. Go and write your book. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it's so amazing. What wow. those hey, President, this is a testimony time. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, share your own now. Share your own testimony. But this is what happened to me. I'm yeah, telling you live. I can't speak now. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was so amazing. When nobody was ready to do, uh, you know, do that for me, she said, ah, where can you know? How can you not know how to write a, a case book? What is here? What's in it? I say, I've, I've not even seen one. I don't know how. She come, she took me in her car. Say, let's go. Went to her house, she brought her her case book. I said, take it. Go and write your part two. Ah, uh ah. -uh. So, bully, since you passed part one, eh? who is teaching you, sir? Who is training you? I said, nobody, ma. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's awesome. God will bless them. Okay, amen. so um, amen, amen. Um, yes, I think sir. I've taken enough pictures. If I didn't take your picture, it's because you didn't put on your video. And I, I beg to sign out after this in the absence of, of any more business, any testimonies. In the absence of any testimony, we can call it a day. Dr. Nkechi, do you have anything to add? Okay, so that will be for now. Please, those centers that have not celebrated, have not taken your pictures, you can do it tomorrow, you can do it, you can do it on Monday, Tuesday, as as the spirit leads, please. 
Thank you so much. So I will sign out for now. I'll end the meeting for all. Good night. Rest well and uh, God bless. Good night, ma. Thank Long you so much. Good night, ma. Good night, ma. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Everybody, it's been a lovely meeting. Good Thank night. you. Thanks for attending.